after a minute. Thank you all very much for coming. This is a lucky place for me because the last time I spoke here was, I th think I'm right in saying, it was the last reading I gave for the Finkler question before it won the Man Booker Prize. So mm -hmm. you can't, you're not able to do that for me with this book, but nonetheless, you know, you may confer another blessing on it <laughs> just as well. I'll read a bit from it, um, a bit at the beginning and then a bit at the end. In fact, I'll read the bit that was uh, talked about, I think, uh, because that's the beginning of the book, and I think it's funny. I'll just say a few things about it. Um, the genesis of Zoo Time, really, to understand it, you have to go back to the beginning, when I first began as a writer, my first novel, Coming From Behind, which was a novel written in uh, desperation because I was teaching in a polytechnic in Wolverhampton um, and thought, it's funny how you only have to say I was teaching in a polytechnic <laughs> and people, people either laugh or look at you with profound pity. Well, I, I looked at myself with profound pity. Uh, I didn't like the place, I didn't like the teaching. Um, I should have liked the teaching, there was nothing wrong with it really, but I had, like everybody else, teaching at Wolverhampton Poly, we all dreamed that we were really teaching in Oxford or Cambridge, and sh or should have been teaching in Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, and there was nothing to do in the town either. I made the mistake of living in the town on my own, whereas everybody else who taught at the Polytechnic. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was single at that stage between marriages, and everybody else was sort of married with families, and they all lived in the country. The advantage of Wolverhampton, I hadn't realised, was how quickly you can get out of it. To, <laughs> so I was the only person in, teaching in the whole Polytechnic, living in, in, in town, and I had nothing to do, really. So I just wandered around from Indian restaurant to Indian restaurant, which I quite liked doing because I liked Indian food. But you're not, you're not really meant to eat Indian food twice a night. <laughs> Because you'd I'd go and be the only person there. You know how Indian restaurants don't really get going until about 11. And I'd be hungry and would have nothing to do. So I'd eat there at 7 and then go home uh, and do some work and prepare a lecture. And by 11, I'd be hungry again. So I'd go out again. Not to the same one. I knew that was a mistake. And I actually got ill. I actually was ill while I was teaching at Wolverhampton. And they took a blood test. And um, there was no blood. <laughs> there was no blood. There was just there was just vindaloo paste <laughs> coursing through my veins. <coughs> and the and we knew it was all up with us as a serious department when they moved us from the civic building that we had in uh, in Wolverhampton to Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Ground. <laughs> they put these sensitive men and women, teachers of humanities, who were who thought they were in Oxford and Cambridge in Wolverhampton Wanderers <laughs> Football Ground. <laughs> Uh, and I thought, this is so absurd, all I can do really is write, a, is write a funny novel about it. And that was my first novel. I'd all along wanted to write uh, something of the grandeur of uh, Anna Karenina, or War and Peace, or Brothers Karen, something big and grand, Middle March, something like that. Uh, and because I'd wanted to write a novel of that sort, I'd never written it, because the, first of all, they'd already been written, and those novels did not suit whatever talent I had. And it was only when I really hit rock bottom in Wolverhampton that I found what, my, what, what talent I have anyway, that I found what it was, which was to be bleakly funny about despair, really. Um, and of course it was also a campus novel and there's a, there's a certain thing that you can do in there's a certain kind of despair that you can write about in campus novels uh, that it's hard to do in any other world because, because you can set idealists who have hugely grand ideas about, about, their, about what they want to do, what education should be, what it is that they teach, and this comes uh, hard up against you know, the cruel facts of what actually happens in, uh, in an academy, or at least in an academy of the kind I was teaching in. And then I moved on, moved out. I, th that novel got me out of Wolverhampton. I had to leave Wolverhampton because um, it was perfectly clear who half the characters were, and I could have gone on, <laughs> gone on teaching with them. Though I discovered afterwards that the people who were most parodied in the novel, I learnt this from others, were extremely proud of it and would dine out on it. And the only people uh, with whom I'd taught at Wolverhampton Polytechnic who were in a sulk about the novel were those who weren't in it. <laughs> uh, we'll see whether that holds true for, for Zoo Time. So I moved on and wrote different kinds of things and things with uh, other depths. Um, and then people were just, in the last few years, people were saying to me, we should write a novel like Coming From Behind again. And I thought, well, I can't really write a novel like Coming From Behind again, as I've not been in a campus for years. And that was a special kind of comedy. Um, 
But nonetheless, I kept thinking about it and thinking, well, it actually would be nice to relieve myself of some of the serious, some of the, not that the issues in coming from behind and the issues here aren't serious, but they're serious in another, in another way. Um, and I thought about doing something <coughs> like that. Um, and even when I wrote the, the Finkler question, I thought I was going to do that. And then events, events, events in the world outside um, took over to a degree, and also the sentences. I'm very much a writer that goes where the sentences lead. The sentences just led me into another book, and that was that. So I came away from having finished the Finkler question feeling I still even more, I would just like to have the fun, really, of writing a very black comedy. Um, on top of which, I thought the Finkler question was not going to do anything. It clearly was not going to do anything. It was apparent. My American publisher didn't like it. My, my existing English publisher wasn't all that keen, so I changed publishers. There was no sign that this was a book that was going anywhere. And at the time that I handed the manuscript in, most writers like myself were being told by our agents that our, prof our jobs were in trouble, really. Our profession was in trouble. There was much less money kicking around. Although there seemed to be books everywhere, our kind of books weren't selling very well. Other kind of books weren't. So... So people were saying, you know, my agent knew not to say to me, couldn't you do something with a vampire? <laughs> but he knew somewhere, he knew somewhere that, you know, that was, that was the kind of wish. Just as many, truly many women writers now are being called in by their publishers and being told, couldn't you put a bit of sadomasochistic sex in? Because publishers are wicked like this, I mean, hopeless, you know. They, they can't create anything, they just follow. Something happens and they, and they, and they follow it.